So our next speaker, hey Chris Murphy, our, ne our next speaker is uh, Tom Preston Werner, uh, co-founder of GitHub, co-founder of CodeStarter. Uh, he's here today to talk about CodeStarter. Um, I've known Tom a few years. Uh, I've always found him to be a highly intelligent, uh, entertaining individual. And I don't know if we'll get a highly intelligent, entertaining talk, but I've got fingers crossed. Tom Preston Werner. Hello, everyone. Wow, that's really loud. Makes me feel very important to be that loud. So thank you all for coming today. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I think we can help more people and a more diverse group of people become programmers and harness the power of code by doing some very simple things. And that all starts with this amazing device. Well, it did for me. This is the very first computer that I ever owned. My dad bought this computer, brought it home, set it up in a room, and then I sat down at it one day, turned it on, and was presented with a blinking cursor. Because that's what this machine did when you turned it on. Blanking cursor. Nothing else. But then what happened is, you start to learn. You also had an instruction manual, and in it, it had a way to turn this machine into something more than just a blinking cursor. And you did that by entering in letters. So I sat down, I started typing these letters, the same as they were in the instruction manual, and eventually, you can run a program. And that moment, that first moment, that you run a program and the computer does what you told it to do, is probably the most life-changing moment that I think a child can have, because that is real power, especially today when so much that we do happens with computers. And so that's how I started learning to program, and then over the years I got better computers, I got some Macintoshes, I got a 14.4K modem pretty fast, but it allowed me to connect to the internet and discover other places outside of where I grew up in a small town in Iowa. I could go on and browse other programs that people had written and then download them and then type them in to my computer and run them. And that was really awesome. And later on, I'd write programs in high school. I was what you call a super nerd in high school. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. But I would write programs to visualize the electron shells around atoms and things like that. It made me really popular in high school. So. <laughs> I think we need to give that power to more children, too. But it led me to this world where I could build things with a computer, things that I could think up and then turn into reality simply by typing things into a machine. And that, that's powerful. So I'd like you to take a moment and reflect on yourself. When did you get your first computer or have access to a computer that felt like it was your own? So I'd like you to all stand up. Everybody stand up. You're gonna get a little exercise. You've been sitting for a while. Now think, how old were you when you got your first computer? Do you have a number in your head? Okay. Now I'd like you to sit down if you were 30 years old or older when you got your first computer. 30 years or older when you got your first computer, sit down. Okay. How about 28 or older? 25 or older, 23 or older, 21 or older, 20, 19 or older, when you got your first computer, sit down, 18 or older, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Now I want you to look around. I went down to 10 years old, 10 years old. Look at how many people are still standing. I guarantee you that this is not the demographic of the population of the world and how old they were when they got their first computer. And the demographic that's in this room today, these are people that understand and build things with technology, improve people's lives with technology and code. 
right? And they're here because, I'm guessing, you've all had a very long time to practice programming. You may sit down now. Years and years and years with access to technology. That makes a huge difference. It means that when you are first presented with computers in high school, as part of your school, you're familiar with them, you understand them, you're unafraid of them, and so you can enjoy it. And when you go to college, you've been programming for years maybe, and so the coursework seems easy, and so you stick with it. And so I'm wondering, is there a way that we can help more kids have that same opportunity to learn how to code and to become familiar with computers and technology from a younger age? And what would it take? And how could we do it? So let me introduce you to Elizabeth here. I first met Elizabeth at a Coder Dojo event in Brooklyn. Coder Dojo is a free computer programming club for kids hosted by volunteers, usually on weekends. And this one was being held at the Brooklyn Public Library. And if you look closely, you'll notice that the laptop that she has is sporting a Brooklyn Public Library sticker because this is not her computer. She did not bring this with her to this class. It was a loner. The problem, though, is that there's not very many of these loner computers at these clubs. It was very lucky that she was able to get her hands on one. And this Coder Dojo event has to turn away kids every week because they don't have enough computers to loan out. And not only that, but Elizabeth here was there under her own will. She wanted to come and learn how to code. But when she goes home from this event, when she went back home, she didn't have a computer that she could use to keep experimenting, to keep trying things out. And I think that sucks, because for me, spending time in front of a computer, experimenting, breaking things, becoming obsessed with BBSs and the internet, those things were only possible because I had a computer that was there and available to me all the time. And so that's why I'm working now on a project called Code Starter. Code Starter is really pretty simple. The concept is to get a laptop into the hands of every kid that wants to learn how to code but can't afford their own hardware. And so we can do this, we figured out how to do this now for $215 per child. And that gets one laptop in the hands of a kid. That's the computer, the setup, and the shipping, all inclusive for $250 per computer. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about how we do that. And we do that, we can only do that because we start with a computer that's inexpensive enough, but still good enough for the task. And so we're using this. This is an Acer Chromebook C720, which you can pick up on Amazon for $199. Now, it's not, you know, an amazing computer, but it's got two gigs of RAM, 16 gigabyte hard drive, a really awesome screen, a keyboard that rivals MacBooks in its quality, great touchpad, good build quality. It's a really pretty kick-ass machine for $200. And so that's how we start. That's the base. That's the expense at which we can start getting one laptop for each of these kids. The scale now is possible because of that price point. But there's a limitation on these machines, which is Chrome OS. Chrome OS is what these machines ship with. It's a sort of thin client for the internet and a lot of Google's services. But it's hard for kids to really experiment if they don't have complete control over the computer and its hardware and software. And so, we figured that it's possible, Google made it possible, to dual boot these machines also with Linux. So what we do is set these machines up with Ubuntu, Linux, and customize it so that it comes with everything a child needs to get started right away with coding, without having to do any other stuff. So this is the desktop that we ship these computers with. You can see some of the companies that have helped us by sponsoring laptops for kids. And on the left, you can see some of the programs that we install by default. So we install an offline version of MIT's Scratch. If you guys are familiar with Scratch, that's great. It's an awesome program for really little kids, anywhere from five years and up. Five-year-olds can use this to write programs because it's just drag and drop. 
You drag and drop the elements of code and you can create loops by enclosing commands in other blocks. And then when you run it, it's all visual. You're affecting this white display here and you can make this the default thing that it comes with is this cat and you can move it around by saying move this cat 10 pixels to the right or rotate it and then move another 10 or you can change the outfit of the cat, things that are very visual, things that give you immediate feedback. And so a lot of the Coder Dojo events and other programs that help kids learn to code start with this. So we wanted to make sure it was included. And a lot of the kids that we give these laptops to are from low income families and might not have access to internet at home. And that's why we wanted to make sure that there was something like this that you could use even offline. We also install some text editors. We start with uh, Genie, which is an open source Linux editor, really quite nice. And we, of course, install Vim and Emacs because kids in courses and as they grow up are gonna wanna have access to that. So we get those on the computer straight away. We also install a variety of programming languages so that they're just there, so that there's no barrier to having to figure out how to install a programming language. We ship with Node.js, Ruby, Python, and Java. Uh, Ruby and Python are really common in classes that teach kids to code. Java is what's used in the United States in the advanced placement courses. So this is a set of tests that can help kids get into better colleges when they graduate. And so it's all Java. So having Java available on these machines was really important to us to try to increase the number and diversity of kids that are able to take the AP courses in the United States. And of course, who's familiar with this? You guys ever play Minecraft? I, I obsessed about Minecraft for a while. Here's my advice to you. Don't ever start playing Minecraft. It will ruin your life. You'll find yourself in a mine underground, chipping away, looking for diamonds at three in the morning and wonder what the hell happened to your life. But that's powerful. The power in this program is that it is so interesting and awesome for kids. And it's more than just a game. In this game, you can use what's called redstone, which is this material that you can lay down paths and circuits and use it to do anything from automatically opening a door when you approach it to creating elevators, all the way up to creating entire 8-bit functional computers inside of Minecraft using redstone. Turns out that if you give programmers the ability to use a logic gate, they will always eventually create a computer. And so that shows you the depth of what's possible within Minecraft. And some of these coding clubs are using Minecraft to get kids interested in programming and understanding the power of what programming means by making it something that's concrete. They can affect the environments that they build in Minecraft by programming the stuff in their Minecraft worlds. And that again is really powerful. So we wanted to make sure that our machines could support and run Minecraft really well, even though it's pretty modest hardware. So if you want to learn a little bit more, if you want a deeper dive into exactly what we do to these laptops to get them set up to go out to kids to be really good development machines for them, you can check out our blog. Uh, there's an article in there called How We Turn $199 Chromebooks into Awesome Development Machines for Kids. So check that out. It goes through the whole process of what we do. And the installer that we use to set them up, it's an installer that we run on each of these laptops, is here on GitHub, and you can check that out, and it's available for free. So if you have someone that you know, a child in your life, that might be interested in learning how to code and you think they could benefit from having their own laptop, you can download this and run it on a $199 Chromebook and have the exact same machine that we ship out to kids. And this, this is what happens when we do this. This is really why we do it. It's the expressions on kids' faces when they first receive their very own laptop. It's the feeling that they have when they complete and run their very first program, maybe in Scratch. There was an event that I was at where a seven-year-old girl had written her very first program and her mom came over, tugged on my shirt and said, my daughter has something to show you. And I went over and she ran the Scratch program that she had created and she had a smile on her face just like this. 
And that's why we do it. Because this, this is a child whose future can be different, who can have more power in the world than she ever thought possible because she was able to have a computer when she was young. Now, we don't just give these computers out to anyone. We want to make sure that they're going to kids that are really motivated and want to learn how to code. And so we have them earn the computers. So all of the partners that we work with, they'll have their children go through a set of courses. And as long as they stick with it, it's not about grades. It's not about anything except the desire to keep learning. And if they complete that, if they attend, it's really attendance-based. If they attend usually between four and six classes, then these computers go home with them and they're able to keep them forever. And the way that we find kids, because getting them to the right kids is really important. Like I said before, we want the kids to be really motivated, really interested in learning how to code. And so we're partnering with programs like Coder Dojo that I mentioned before, Mission Bit, which is an after-school coding course, and schools around the world. I see a Coder Dojo sticker right here. Coder Dojo is actually at Web Summit, so look for them out in the exhibit hall. They've got stickers, probably, available. They're really awesome. Check them out online. We partner with programs like this and schools to help us select the children that are going to receive these laptops. And then we ship the laptops to the schools so that they can distribute them to the children. This makes it a lot easier for us because they handle a lot of that process and they become responsible and accountable for delivering those laptops and making sure they don't get lost and making sure the children are going through the coursework in order to earn them. This is Thomas from a Coder Dojo in Virginia, the very first event that we ever supplied laptops to. We shipped them 35 laptops for a summer program that taught robotics, 3D printing, Arduino, and code. And they were able to invite 35 more children to their program, children that didn't have their own laptops to participate because of what we were able to figure out with CodeStarter. We also wanted to see how this program was working to make sure that what we're doing is making a difference. And so each child that receives a laptop, we have take a survey, which gives us a little bit of information about them and what their favorite subject is, what subjects they dislike. And over time, we want to keep this data and see if these kids are continuing to use the laptops to learn to code to improve this. As the last stop, as, I'm sorry, as the last step in the registration process, we have them take a picture of themselves with their brand new computer so that we can send this photo to the donors that make this possible so that they can see the exact same smile that we see that motivates us to keep doing this. And so this is 20 of the 206 children that we've currently funded for laptops. That's over $50,000 in laptops that we've been able to fund for kids so far. And we're hoping to keep scaling this out and keep delivering more laptops for kids so that they can have the same kind of power that I think all of you in this room understand is present if you have the right access. If you're interested, it'd be awesome to see a follow on Twitter at CodeStarter.org. We also got our website. Here's my email if you want to talk to me about this at all. If you'd like to become involved, it would be amazing. We're looking for help on not only the installer of Linux, but also in what we put on that. We're looking for volunteers to help us build out the website, to help us install stuff on these computers. If you happen to be in the Bay Area, that's where we do it. And we're really interested in making sure that every kid, every kid that wants to learn how to code has that opportunity. Thank you.